Hey everyone, it's Emmy Hollis here at Hell Car. And this week I've got the 2015 Kia Sedona SXL. Now, it's definitely a kid hauler. I don't have any kids, but whoop, I got a kid bike. We'll see how she do coming up next on the fast lane car. Okay, wait, I got it, I got it. in the front, Kia has done a lot to try to make this car look a little bit more sporty, a little bit more aggressive, and frankly, I, th I think that they've been pretty successful. I've got a lot of chrome in the front, almost too much, but not quite. Uh, this awesome little 3D tabbed grille, which is pretty cool, fog lights. My headlights are a little pinched and a little squinty, which I really like. And then when I come around here to the side, I'm rolling on 19 inch wheels, and check out those wheels. I mean, those are pretty flashy for a minivan, right? I've also got a nice uh, character line that goes all the way down the side of the body. But what I don't like is that on the whole, on the profile, it still retains quite a boxy look. I wish that the designers had been able to take some of the sportiness from the front and incorporate it into the profile. So under the hood, Kia has given us a 3.3 liter V6, which is good for 276 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. Now power goes to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission. That's right, no CVT in this baby. And EPA fuel ratings are 17 in the city, 22 out on the highway, and 19 combined. Although my time in the car with mostly city driving, a little bit of highway, I averaged 17.3. The Sedona has three different driving modes. I've got an Eco, a Comfort, and a Normal. And I have to be honest with you, I have driven it in all three different driving modes, and I don't know the difference between any of them. I mean, I like to think that I have a sensitivity towards how cars drive, but I, I can't tell the difference. So, you know, go to town. Whatever one you want to drive in, I feel like they're all going to be exactly the same. Now, one of the things that's interesting in this car too, I've got a six-speed automatic. Um, it's a little slow shifting. It does kind of search around for gears a little bit and it's, you're pretty sluggish off the line, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, this car weighs about 4,000 pounds. So anytime you're going off the line, don't expect to be, you know, beating the guy next to you because it's, it's pretty slow. Um, but, so we've got a six speed man automatic transmission, but I can operate it manually, which to me is hilarious. Like, I mean, I don't understand a lot of things, you guys. Like, I don't understand why people eat sushi and I don't understand why Kia decided to put an operate, like a manumatic in this car. Who is gonna use that? Why go through the extra expense of making, letting people shift their own gears sort of? So um, let's do it, let's see what happens. So I'm in manual mode. Let's see if it'll let me hold it to the red line. Nope, it'll shift for me. I mean, someone like me, or someone who's maybe a little bit of an enthusiast that finds himself driving a minivan, they might want to put it in manual mode, but your average everyday driver is just, they're not even going to know what that means. They're not even going to know what that plus and minus means on the gear shift. So yeah, I think it's pretty funny. Inside the cabin, this is definitely a nice place to spend some time. Seats are very, very supportive. Everything is laid out pretty intuitively and ergonomically. Although I will say that sitting here in my driving position, trying to reach the screen, I do have to lean forward a little bit, but fortunately your major controls like your Bluetooth and your radio controls are all on your multifunctional steering wheel. 
Now, you've got everything you've come to expect in a new car, right? You've got cruise control, Bluetooth, you've got a USB port, uh, you've got navigation, you've got satellite radio capabilities, iPod capabilities, all that fun stuff. And the Kia Uvo system is actually very easy to use and it's super intuitive and it, it works a lot like how, very simply and how I want my, um, all of my infotainment to work. Now, for example, when I uh, need to input an address into the navigation, all of my information that they want me to input is right here on one screen. On a lot of different systems, it says enter the house number. So you enter it and then it goes to a different screen. Here, it's all on one screen, which makes it very nice. It's just a little bit faster. Your inputs are a little bit faster. So my second row of seats, I've got two captain's chairs and uh, they're pretty awesome. And I'll tell you why, um, cause I've got a footrest. <laughs> of course, I'm way too tall to be back here, but I have a footrest and it goes all the way back, almost all the way back. So that's pretty awesome, right? But if you'll notice, there isn't a lot of room here in between these seats. So, come on. Come on. Ah, there we go. All right. So I don't have a lot of room here in between these seats to access this third row, but they have given me a way to slide this way this will slide that way. It will give you a little bit of room, not too much, but enough for you to access the back seat. Um, but regardless of what mode you're in, manual mode or comfort eco or normal, this car does ride really smoothly. The chassis is a little bit stiffer than last year, but it doesn't translate to any harshness in the ride. I mean, it soaks up bumps pretty well and I'm driving in the city. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm facing potholes and all kinds of crazy crap. And it was, it's a very, very comfortable ride. So in the lower trim lines of the Sedona, you can get a traditional hydraulic setup for your steering. In this car, in this trim level, it is electronic. Um, and you know, it's not bad. It's pretty light. Um, I prefer a heavier steering, but I think consumers for a minivan are gonna find this steering to be pretty acceptable. Um, inputs are pretty quick, uh, although there is a lot of body roll. <laughs> I took a turn at the same speed that I take it with my daily driver, and yeah, I was a little scared. There's a ton of body roll. But um, going back to steering, the inputs are pretty quick and you have a pretty good turning ratio. I'm able to turn, flip a UE in the middle of a street as long as there are no cars parked on either side. And that's pretty good for a minivan. So one of the things that's pretty cool about this car and the camera system is that I can um, ask it to give me a bunch of different views. So I can have the front view, I can have the three quarter view, I can have the other three quarter view, or I can have a bird's eye view, which can be helpful if you have children like Andrew <laughs> riding around your car or your minivan while you are trying to back up. So I can be able to see him all the way around, which is pretty helpful. And honestly, I just really like to see Andrew on the little bike because it's gotta be funnier than when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can get back here. I'm a little wide in the butt for that, but I can, but I think kids are not gonna have any problem. Um, and I gotta tell you, I wouldn't wanna spend a ton of time back here. It's pretty small, pretty small. Now parents, if you have a teenager and the teenager wants to take the car out, I mean, first of all, you're not embarrassing them enough by saying, yes, go out in our minivan. Go take your prom date. date go take your date to the prom in the minivan. Um, the Uvo system has a like a geo fencing. So you can put the kid in the car and then it will monitor where they are, uh, how fast they're going, all via your smartphone. And then if the kid is out too late and maybe doesn't notice that it, you know, says one o'clock in the morning or whatever, it will let them know like, hey, kid, you're out past curfew. You got to get back home. So for parents, you know, if you feel you don't trust your kid enough, you feel that you need to spy on them, that's a really good thing. Um, although I hope that you would trust your teenager enough. You know, well, kids aren't bad. They're just misunderstood. So Kia has got like a magic lift gate where if I stand behind it with the fob for three seconds, it'll open. 
but this never works for me. Apparently I admit some kind of magnetism that means that this stuff never works for me. It never works. I don't understand, it never works. But I do have a button that I can press and hold. There we go, come on little girl. Now with these third seats folded up, third row seats folded up, I've got 33.9 cubic feet of space and mostly that's because I have a super deep well here. Now you know I only do the laundry basket rating with the full maximum amount of passengers. So I'm able to get two laundry baskets back here, but I think that that's kind of an unfair rating because there's definitely way more space here. Now I can fold these guys down pretty easily. Two stow. Totally easily. Let's see what's happening. Okay, here we go. go. Alright, it was only really slightly complicated. <laughs> so pull this, bring this back, pull this, push that forward, bring that whole thing. <sighs> Alright, with that I get 178 cubic feet of space. So I'll give it a laundry basket rating for that. Let's see. I might not even have enough laundry baskets. One, two, three. Four, five, easily. And if I move those seats up, I could probably get six. The biggest drawback to this car, if you have kids, I think, um, is that there's no entertainment system in the back seat. Um, the Honda Odyssey has it, the Toyota Sienna has it, the uh, Town & Country, I believe, has it. So these are all, I think that this is something that consumers come to expect in a minivan, in a kid hauler like this, and this car just doesn't have it. I'm not sure why they didn't do it, um, I, you know, Kia has been known for putting a lot of features in their cars at bare bones prices. And for some reason they kind of skipped that in this, in this car. Uh, so you'd have to get some kind of an aftermarket thing. Of course, yeah, I know kids can always have their iPod and their iPad and all that stuff, but it really is nice to have something that's built in, um, so that in case you run out of battery or you didn't, you forgot to preload something, it's always there for you. there is some competition out there in the minivan market. I've got the Honda Odyssey, the Toyota Sienna. Now this car, this Kia Sedona with the uh, SXL trim package, it comes in at just over $43,000. So that's pretty comparable to a Honda Odyssey Touring, but the Honda Odyssey Touring comes with a DVD player in the back seat and that whole magic seat section. If you want the vacuum, you gotta bump it up a notch to the next trim level. The Toyota Sienna, the original Swagger rag wagon, is pretty comparable to this, but it also comes in all-wheel drive, although that will bump your price up to just over $46,000. To be honest, if it were me, I might look at the Dodge Grand Caravan. It comes in at right around $30,000, and you can get it in an RT with a sports suspension. I mean, I don't know what that would do in a minivan, but it's an RT! This car right here, the 2015 Kia Sedona SXL, comes in at just over $43,000. So on the TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, I've got to give the 2015 Kia Sedona SXL a very strong lease it. It drives well, it gets fairly good gas mileage for what it is, but it just could use more. You know what I'm saying? That's it for today. I'm Emmy Hall. Thank you so much for watching. Yay! I love it when you guys all watch minivan reviews. Hey, you can find us all on the interweb at tflcar.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. And of course, we're on all those crazy social medias. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm the biggest nerd ever. <laughs> <laughs>